This slide shows the formula used for calculating the subscores for just three of the 11 items that make up the grand score of a stock. You find which option your stock falls into. For example, suppose your stock four years ago was trading at $14. It would thus fall into the $10 to $14.99 range and would earn a subscore of five. For all 11 subscores calculated, you would find the appropriate slot that the stock would fit into. Thus, you can manually calculate the stock score without a computer. However, the computer program does all the sorting and matching and adds up all the scores for each item to give the grand score for the stock. To give investors faith in the stock, the score matrix was provided so that you can see exactly how the score is calculated. Build a portfolio of 20 stocks paying a minimum of 3.5% dividend. The quickest way of doing it is to go to the last four chapters of the book. In chapter 13, you will find all 654 stocks that paid a 3.5% dividend and were traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange in May of 2019. The 654 stocks are sorted in descending order by score. In addition to the score, you'll find next to each stock, the stock symbol, the company name, the price of the stock, and the dividend percent paid. In chapter 14, the same information is sorted alphabetically by company name. This can be useful in finding information on a company that you may have read about. In chapter 15, the information is sorted by descending dividend percent. This is useful when you are trying to find a higher dividend paying stock. The final chapter 16 is sorted in descending order by stock price. It is important that before you purchase a stock that you rescore it. Information in stocks can change very rapidly. The minimum 3.5% dividend selector immediately eliminated 3,814 stocks for consideration. This left 654 that would still take several days to score. Within these 654 are 366 preferred shares. Previously, I explained why preferred shares can be eliminated for, from consideration. This leaves you with 288 shares for purchase consideration. Of that 288, the highest score was 76, the lowest score was 7, 34 of the highest dividend paying stocks scored less than 42, no stocks under $1 scored higher than 43. Only two stocks under $8 have a score over 60. I avoid buying stocks scoring less than 50. You may also want to eliminate mining and oil companies whose share price fluctuate with world commodity prices. Since lower price stocks have a better chance of doubling in value, you may want to give them your first consideration. Before you realize it, you will have selected your 20 stocks. When you have chosen your 20 stocks, you may want to learn as much about them as you can. Do Google searches. Check each of them out before you purchase the shares. You are quickly scanning for problems. The perfect stock does not exist. The 20 stocks you select will be 20 compromises. The stocks you are considering are all by their scores or standing stocks. Choosing 20 stocks minimizes the possibility of a loss of capital from your total portfolio and increases the expectations of a significant capital gain in your portfolio. To buy a stock in your investment dealer's website, find a button called Trading. You click on it and another menu will appear giving you a choice of buy or sell. After clicking on the buy button, you will be asked what you want to buy. 
you choose stocks. A new screen appears where you type in what stock you want by either stock symbol or by name. The stock you want appears in a window. You select it. Now enter how many shares you are buying and what price you wish to bid for the stock. Under price, you're given the option of accepting the current market price or choosing a limit and putting in the lower price bid. As soon as you select limit, a window appears for you to enter in the price you will offer. I always put in an amount below the current price being offered just to see what will happen. A window good till allows you to put in the number of days that you will leave this price open. To complete the bid, you enter your password, hit the preview order button to make sure the order is recorded as you expected, and then hit the button to place the order. If a seller accepts the price, it will be filled immediately. After placing your order, you can return to the trading screen and by choosing order status, you can see if your bid has been taken up. If you're in a hurry to get the stock, you can increase the price in this screen. Once the bid is accepted by a seller, it will take a day or two to appear in your record of stocks owned. Thousands of people own shares in a company. It is their small piece of the corporation. Each year at the annual meeting, the shareholders elect directors. One share counts as one vote. The shareholder with the most shares have greatest control over who become directors and in turn, who controls the company. No shareholder wants to sell their shares for less than what they paid for them. Every seller is a pessimist who thinks that the stock has reached its height and every buyer is an optimist who thinks the price will go higher. They need each other. The executives are usually given stock options, which are generous incentives for focusing their attention on doing whatever is necessary to increase the share price for all shareholders. It is not unusual for a chief executive who is unable to increase share prices to be replaced by the directors. This emphasis on share price can have repercussions such as suppression of negative information, using profits to buy back shares instead of paying dividends, and investing in future developments. Eventually, you will reach a point where you accept that you really have carefully chosen good stocks. The price is rising and your dividends are arriving like clockwork. You will then relax and limit your monitoring to five minutes each day. Each day, I record the total value of my portfolio and I check to see if any cash has been deposited in this trading account. It would probably be from dividends being paid. Every quarter, you might want to score all your stocks or at least those where the price has fallen below your purchase price. Since the idea is to hold these stocks forever, very rarely will you be selling a stock. I do sell a stock if and when the dividend and the score fall below an acceptable level. Whenever an unexpected amount of cash appears deposited in my trading account, I want to know what it is. In your main entry screen is an accounts option. You click on that and are presented with a list of options. One of these is activity. Clicking on it brings up a screen like our example. Immediately, you can see in detail where every penny that is entered and taken out of your account. Above the activity option is the holdings option. Clicking on that brings up a screen like this example. The gains in each stock over its initial purchase price are printed in green ink, both the dollar gain and the percentage gain. Losses are shown in red. Beside it is what percentage of the total portfolio this stock represents. I will often add money to those stocks who have fallen below the ideal 5% that each stock originally represented of the total portfolio. 
If you have credit card debt and you are paying 22% interest on the outstanding balance, it makes little sense to be putting your money into the stock market to earn a 6% dividend. If your objective is to achieve financial independence, in order to build up your savings, you will have to make short-term sacrifices. Chapter 11 suggests where these sacrifices could be made. This book will be updated annually. In future editions, I want to address questions and concerns that may have been overlooked. I want the book to be as comprehensive as possible. Therefore, please do not hesitate in bringing your questions and concerns to my attention. I have been asked by those who have bought the book if I would meet with groups and go through my stock scoring system. I obviously have a passion for the subject and I do enjoy meeting with those who should take control over their investing.